What is the computational complexity of arithmetic coding? How fast is this algorithm? In this video, we're going to analyze the complexity of the infinite precision algorithm, and then I'll make some remarks about why the finite precision case is, has essentially the same complexity. So first, let's think about the infinite precision case. What we're going to see is that the expected time, in other words, on average, how long it takes the algorithm to run, is pretty much the best you could hope for. It's very, very good. So our assumption here in our analysis for the infinite precision case is going to be the, the totally unreasonable assumption that we can do uh, infinite precision arithmetic, that is, we can do addition and multiplication exactly in constant time. So assume infinite, infinite precision, precision, addition and multiplication, addition and multiplication, take constant time, constant time. A totally wild and unrealistic assumption, but it'll be useful to analyze the algorithm, the infinite precision algorithm under this assumption, because the finite precision algorithm will have basically the same thing. Addition and multiplication will take constant time, but you'll just be working with some finite level of precision. Okay, so under this assumption, let's analyze the algorithm. Let's see how long things take. So here's the algorithm that we wrote down. And so the variable of interest that we're analyzing the complexity with respect to is going to be the length of the input sequence, the length of the sequence to be encoded. So let's call that sequence x. And let's denote its length by, by sort of the absolute value sign things of x. So th in this example here, this would be k plus 1. So this is what we're going to be interested in uh, the complexity of the algorithm with respect to. And so here we have our source alphabet x, and it's just some, some finite fixed length set 0 up to n. So n, we're not going to be thinking about how the complexity changes with respect to n. So we have this fixed finite set, and we have this PMF on this fixed finite set. And so all of these pre-computations here, this pre-computation of these C's and D's, this all just takes constant time. So that's no problem at all. So what about the encoder? How long does this stuff take? Well, we have our input here, and so we're calling this thing x. And remember, the length of x is what we're interested in. And so maybe let me just give you an example uh, of what I mean by the length of x versus l of x. I'm going to be using this, and I'm also going to be using this notation, l of x. So l of x, I'm going to be using for the length of the encoded message for x. So l of x here is going to be this, this m, where m was the, the length, the, it was the number of bits in the encoded message. So here, l of x is, is m in the notation I'm using. So let me give you a, a, an example just to make this concrete. Uh, in this example, uh, our, in, our message to be encoded is 210, and this has length 3. And our encoded message is 101100, and this has length 6. So let's write down what the corresponding things are here. So x, 210, this has length 3. So the length of x is 3. And L of X, on the other hand, the encoded sequence is, is 101100. So L of X is the number of bits in the encoding. So this is 6. So that's what I mean by length of X versus L of X. So let's look at the complexity of this guy. So the encoder, part A of the encoder, how long does this take? Well, this is just some, uh, you know, constant time pre-computation. And then here we have this loop from as i goes from 1 to k plus 1. And k plus 1, this is the thing that we're interested in. Now inside this loop, this is these are all just constant time operations because we're assuming we can do 
arbitrary, you know, infinite precision uh, arithmetic in constant time. So this all just takes constant time, subtraction, blah, blah, blah. And furthermore, the lookup time to, to find the xth entry of d and of c, this just takes constant time also because our assumption is that the, the length of our source alphabet and therefore the length of these vectors c and d is just some fixed finite constant. So part A here, this takes, the order of time that this takes is the number of loops times how long it takes to do each loop. This is constant time, so the order is just the number of loops, which is k plus 1, or in other words, in terms of x, it's the length of x. It's the length of the message to be encoded. All right, so what about B? So that handles A. So in B, this is just, of course, constant time. And then we have first this, this while loop. So for every iteration of this loop, we have these computations and all this stuff, this is all just constant time stuff, just like before. So what counts as is the number of times through the loop. So note that for every iteration of the loop, we're emitting either a zero or a one. So we're incrementing with every iteration of the loop, we're incrementing the the length of the encoded message by one. So remember that. And now let's think about this loop here. So this all is again constant time stuff. So what counts is the number of times through the loop. And note that for every iteration of the loop, we increment this s counter by one. S starts out at zero, we increment it by one each time we go through this loop. We increment it once more here, that's not gonna matter. And then at the last, we emit a zero and s ones or a one and s zeros. So by, for every iteration of this loop, by incrementing s, we are also incrementing the length of the output sequence. So what we see is that the number of, of iterations through this loop plus the number of iterations through this loop is on the order of the length of the, the sequence that we encode, the, the encoded sequence. So, so what we conclude is that the order of computation for part B, it's of the order of L of X. L of X, remember, is just the length of this encoded sequence. All right, so that's it. So that's so the total complexity of the encoder is just the sum of these two guys. So let's write down what we have found down here. So the order of computation of the encoder is order the length of x plus the length of the encoding of x. Now let's think about the decoder. So back up here, here's our decoder. So the decoder takes this input, the, it's, the, the binary, it's a binary sequence that starts with our encoded message. And let's assume, to simplify things, let's assume that this capital M is on the order of little m. That's going to be the case in the finite precision algorithm, which is what we, what we really care about. And so, uh, so let's make that assumption for now in our analysis of the infinite precision case. Because what we really are interested in is, is taking this analysis of the infinite precision case and, um, and then applying it to the finite precision case. So assume that this, this capital M is on the order of, of little m, which is the length of the, the encoded message. And let's analyze the complexity. So this is, is constant time, this initialization, a is zero, b is one, and this Computing this initial z, this takes order capital M time, which we're assuming is the same as little m, which is just, that's just order L of x. So, so we have this first thing is order L of x. And now how many times do we have to go through the while loop and how complex is each iteration of the while loop? Well, let's see. So let's think about how complex, how complex each iteration is. We have this for loop. N is a constant, so it's a fixed finite constant. So, so this is just you know, N times the complexity of what happens inside, and, and so that just falls out as a constant. 
And how complex is this? So this is all just constant time stuff again. Uh, this is all this is all constant time stuff. So our total complexity is it's n times some constant n is also a constant. So what really counts is the number of iterations through the while loop. That's what we really care about. So how many times do we have to go through the while loop? Well, note that on every iteration of the while loop, this is going to be true, this condition is going to be true for exactly one j, right? Because we're decoding. That's the next symbol that we're decoding. You know, we're looking at the first um, first chunk and then the next chunk and then the, the next chunk. And the, the number z is going to be in exactly one of those chunks because they partition the interval from a to b. So this will be true exactly once and we'll always emit one symbol. So on every iteration of the while loop, we're emitting one symbol. So the number of times through the while loop is precisely the length of the output sequence, which is the same as the sequence that we originally encoded, the, the, uh, the input sequence. I mean, it's, it's the output sequence of the decoder, which is the same as the, the original message that we were encoding. So this while loop is order, this is order length of x because this is exactly our original x. All right. So the total complexity of the decoder is once again, it's just the same. It's the sum of order L of x plus order length of x. So we have that the decoder has precisely the same complexity as the encoder. So this is looking pretty darn good so far, right? So both of these, both of these are linear, linear time in the, uh, the original input sequence length and the encoded sequence length. Linear time in this and this, which is pretty darn good. But what's not uh, so clear is how the length of x uh, depends on x and, and how good, you know, in, in order for linear time in L of x to, to be good, L of x needs to be small or at least small on average. So what we really are going to care about, because, I mean, we can't upper bound L of x by um, it would be difficult to sort of upper bound it by, you know, you couldn't upper bound it by a constant or something like that. And you might try to upper bound it by some function of the length of the input sequence x. But if you tried to do that, what you would find is that, that it's going to depend um, very heavily on, on p, on the distribution p that you're assuming. So it's not clear, how, you know, to me at least, a simple way to upper bound this by some function of this. But what you can do is use the fact that arithmetic coding is near optimal. And we can see that the expected time, the expected value of this quantity is going to be very close to optimal. So the reason why that's the case is, of course, just because the expect, so the expected time, well, maybe I'll, I'll write it here. So expected time is small since the expected value of L of capital X, so now X is a random variable, that's, so X is, is this sequence to capital X, capital K, zero, it's, it's the, this, where this is distributed according to that P star of X distribution. And so under this distribution, the expected length, the expected encoded length, is that's exactly what we, we what we were calling L star circle. And this is less than the entropy of this P star thing plus two. And so since this is lower bounded by the entropy of this, then when this is actually the true distribution, then this expected time is pretty, it's basically the best you could hope for. 
So since we're linear time in the length of x, and there's no way, I mean, you could never get better than linear time in the length of x because you at least have to read the whole input sequence. So, so that's, that's optimal. That's optimal. And having expected time that is, um, that is within two bits of the ideal of the entropy, that is basically optimal for the length of the encoding of x. And so on average, the, the amount of time that you take is going to be essentially optimal. So this is pretty cool. You know, here we have a, an algorithm that gets basically with, you know, I mean, of course, we're assuming in, that we can do infinite precision arithmetic. But assuming that for the moment, we can get within a couple bits of the ideal encoded length. So the compression is basically the best you could hope for. And the time that it takes you is basically the best you could hope for. So this algorithm is, is quite remarkable. Now, that was the infinite precision case. So let me explain now, just briefly, I won't go into details, but why this analysis basically works. It's essentially the same in the finite precision case. So in the finite precision case, what happens is that the complexity of these operations the encoder and the decoder are still the same. So rather than having uh, making this assumption, you will of course not make this assumption anymore because you're just doing finite precision addition and, and multiplication. And the constant is going to be something that depends on the level of precision that you're using. So what ends up happening is that you still retain this, this linear time in um, the length of x and the length of the encoding of x. And what, do, what does degrade in the finite precision case is the compression performance. So you get a slight degradation of the compression performance. And so the expected time, it might not be quite this good. It might not be quite so small, um, but it's still, you know, for a given, you know, even not a huge amount of precision, you know, like 32 bit or something precision, you can approximate your, your P, you know, the original P that we were using, P, P0, P1, and so forth. What matters in terms of getting a good compression performance is being able to approximate P very well with your level of precision. And Usually you can do a pretty darn good approximation with like 32 bit precision. Of course, it depends on your P. If N is very large and you have some very, very small probabilities, then, then you might um, suffer. But typically you're going to be able to get a pretty darn good approximation of P. And so your compression performance will be pretty darn good. You know, empirically um, my, you know, from just you know, empirically you're still within it's on the order of, you know, some, a, a few bits or, you know, tens or, or hundreds of bits, even, you know, for like a very, very large file, you know, so it, it's not a, a huge, um, a huge uh, impact in your performance. So it's on the order of a few bits, tens of bits in terms of your expected um, encoded length compared to the ideal. So, uh, so what the, the, the point is, the, the upshot is that the complexity, the computational complexity in the finite precision case results in being essentially the best that you could hope for. It's pretty, it's pretty close to, to the best you could hope for. All right. So that is the computational complexity of arithmetic coding.